All right, welcome to the 2006 Dragon Promotions World Straight Pool Championships. We're in the beginning stages of the round robin. And each player was put in a group of eight. Top four advance to the final 32, and the top uh, 16 advance to the final rounds, race 200 points. I'm with Danny Baruti today. Thanks, Danny, for joining us. Oh, it's a pleasure to be here. This is going to be a really great match. I'm really looking forward to this. Both players at the lag. Tony Robles, one of the top players in the world, a New Yorker. You're very familiar with this game. Right, Danny? Oh, he's beaten me so many times. Yeah, it's like he's got a branding mark on me somewhere. <laughs> he's just a terrific player. One of the best players, uh, one of the most dominant players in New York over the last 25 years. All nine ball, straight ball. Just a terrific player. Very talented. And also his opponent from Germany, Thomas Inger. You know much about Inger? Yeah. Uh, uh, I don't. I'm finding out more and more about Anger. This this guy plays terrific. As I watch him, I I haven't seen him too much, but he plays beautifully also. So this this figures to be a great match. Now Anger, it's a uh, many time European champion, and I think all games, including straight pool, and many times German champion. He's actually even a former junior European champion. So he's been around a while, but this year has been kind of his breakout year, and he's won. Not only European titles, but the Challenge of Champions in the USA. He won the World Pool Masters in Europe. And he won recently, last week, a UPA Tour stop on the men's tour in the USA, the Predator Florida Championships. That's a pretty darn good break. That was a nice break. Wow. I understand Engert's high run is somewhere about like 7,000. It's, it's like up near Jupiter somewhere. <laughs> He's running 495 balls or something like that. Yeah, I think it's in the high 400s, so that's a pretty impressive run in straight. But I don't think uh, there's too many players alive that's got a run like that. No. Well, Inger just getting right down there and shoot the two ball. It doesn't seem like it's that easy, but... Oh, no. He, you think, was he going for it, or was he trying to play a safety? Hard to tell. He hit it very lackadaisically. I mean, it looked like... I don't know what he was trying to do on that... Maybe he was just playing the safe. You're right. He did shoot that very loosely. I, I was kind of surprised. So Both players have great titles to their name. Tony definitely is going to be the hometown favorite here since we're so close to New York City. Oh, yeah. That's a fine shot. You don't want to give a guy an edge in the beginning where he gets a chance to get a momentum going. You know, it gives him a chance to loosen up and pile up the points. First rack can be very critical in these matches. Now, there's a break shot where you can scratch off the side if you make it, but if you don't scratch, you can get a good break. Oh, Tony went behind the rack. That's, wow, nice shot. That's the safe way to do it. And he's got... Uh, I think he has the 14 in the side or the 10 in the corner, which is a kind of a tough cut off the, you know, out of shooting over the corner. Yeah, 10 ball looks kind of tough. But it looks like other than that, he might just shoot the 9 into the 14 as a combination. That's not no, no hanger that's either. Not, no, that's not. <laughs> that's a shot only a mother could love. <laughs> I think he'll be uh, playing the ball on the side going up and down the table. Oh, there. Okay, he's got a, okay, he's he's got got a little shot. window. Yeah, nice. Oh. oh my goodness. It's very difficult to shoot those shots. You have to be very straight and early in the match. You don't really want to be shooting that stuff if you can avoid it. I'm very surprised at him missing that ball. Yeah. Especially uh, the way he missed it. I'm surprised any time Tony misses. <laughs> Tell you the truth, that's how good he plays. And he really is a great player. Yes, here. he is. Knows a lot of trick shots, too. Like you were saying earlier, you know, probably a lot of New York and New Jersey and, and Northeastern players and fans probably not very familiar with Thomas Ingert's name. And just like probably in Europe, where Ingert would be very strong and, and probably a big favorite against Tony, you know, Tony's probably not very, his name is probably not very familiar with European fans. So it's pretty close between these two guys, actually, in predicting who's going to win. Both players basically having equal successes in the pool world. 
Well, they're both per capable of hurting each other, that's for sure. Beautiful shot. Opens them up very controlled fashion. And try and get that five ball out of the way at some point. And uh, see, he's going to work these balls. He's going to play the 13 and swing over for the ball that's on the rail near the side pocket. And then he'll pick off the bottom balls. He'll play off that 15 and then try to shoot the three. And then he'll work the balls in such a fashion that he can come out for a break shot on the eight. He's a very steady player, it appears. Doesn't look like too much trouble here for Inger, does it? Well, it, it could get a little tricky getting to the break shot. He'd like to leave the five, ideally, for the break with the cue ball where the seven is. Which meant he should have, she should have taken care of the seven first, but he didn't, I don't think he came up enough for it. And he's going to play the six and try and, get the, try and get back and get the seven out of there. Now, why wouldn't you want to play the eight ball as a break shot? No, you would. I was talking about for a key ball. Oh, for a key ball. Okay. I'm sorry. I'm getting ahead of myself here. <laughs> You have to slow down, Danny. I don't think quite as far ahead as you in straight pool. I'm sorry. I'm just <laughs> babbling. You know, just. <laughs> Tell you what, Inger and just race to 100 points here in round robin. I mean, that's the mistake Tony made in missing that 13 in the side pocket. That could really haunt him. Oh, yeah. Yeah. In a, in a 150 point game, giving up an open rack is big if the guy gets going. Uh, can you imagine if he runs three or four racks from here, how much pressure it's going to put on Tony and how close he's going to be near the near the exit? You know? and it's too bad, too, because he came with such a great first shot when he got to the table, and then he backed it up with a great break shot from coming from behind. Yes. Oh, that was a, that was a fine shot. Shooting to the side pockets uh, four and a half feet, and you're not warmed up yet. It's all tricky stuff. You can see kind of in the top right-hand corner of the screen. Well, earlier there was a Japanese player, Go Takami. He's going undefeated so far in the round robin stages. First time he played in a straight pool tournament. Is Anger. that right? Yeah, yeah. He's wow. never played straight pool before. and He's doing really well in the event. Looks like he's going to qualify to the next round. A lot of guys in this tournament, international field that we've had, I've never played. I've never played my in a straight pool tournament until this event, as well. And but you have guys like Gotokai from Japan, Dennis Raculio from Philippines, mm -hmm. Mike Davis from the USA. He's never played before, so it's it's been a great experience for a lot of normal nine ball players. Dennis Raculio beat me in the round robin, and when we played, it was a two or three inning game. But he outsafed me. He did some things in the safety play that were astounding. And he didn't know the rules for three fouls, and it was kind of funny. <laughs> but well, it was, it was, nice, it was to, nice to see you be able to look back and laugh at it. It, it was a good game. I was, I was pretty happy with it, even though I lost the game. It was a good game, only a couple of innings for both of us, and I was very close to getting out of it. But Orkulo, like you said, he hasn't played straight pool, but you know he plays so nicely that he can play anything. <laughs> You notice that about the Filipino players, this is an aside, that they all have that deft touch, like Perica and Reyes. And just, they, they float the ball around so gracefully that they could play just about any game they wanted to. Looks like he got a little lucky right there with the set ball kissing back and going towards the pocket. He most certainly did. Ladies and gentlemen, now introducing on table number three. Is he going to blast us? Yes, you have to. Oh, look at that. Look at that. Uh, that's just not lucky. Uh, Thomas Anger gets stuck on a lot of his break shots, you'll notice. He should... And why is that? Well, he, he hits them soft. He tends to hit them soft. Now, if you were to play the same break shot, what would you have done There's differently? Nothing. I, I would have probably missed the object ball or scratched <laughs> but uh, he no he just got an unlucky roll there that's just a case of an unlucky roll he went into the rack very hard he caught a ball full and he died on it 
Uh, there's nothing you can do about that. It's just bad luck. But on his regular break shots, when he shoots the ball near the side of the rack, he often gets stuck or he only has one tough shot. And it happens pretty often. On the break shot that he hit, I mean, if I was shooting that break shot he shot, I would have hit it probably significantly harder than he did. I don't know if that's the right way to do it. But This last one where he got stuck here? Where, no, before oh. the, the first original break shot he yeah. had where he clipped the seven ball and got double kissed, would you have hit that ball harder or about the same speed as he hit it? I don't remember the exact position of the ball. I, I probably would have gotten stuck too. I tend to hit the break <laughs> shots soft and I suffer from the, the same affliction. Is he going for the bank shot? If he is, I don't know. I think he called it. I saw Tony tap his cue as in good shot. He, he called it. He that's that's an incredible shot. I mean, I, I don't know what kind of drugs he's taking right now. <laughs> but uh, That was amazing. Maybe he left the hair dryer on too long. I don't know, but shooting a shot like that is very hairy. Well, I think you told me before, like the old-time straight pole players, the legendary players in the past, they didn't go for bank shots. Certainly not a cross-corner bank. I was talking, uh, that's out of the realm of anyone's point of reference with the old-timers. They, they wouldn't even hear of something like that. You can see Anger there giving a little grin to the camera because yeah. he rattled that nine ball and still fell in. Yeah. He didn't, he didn't hit that nine ball like he wanted to when it fell in the pocket. Well, here's another reason why I wouldn't want to play a cross-corner bank. You're playing against Tony Robles, and uh, he can run out at any point in this game. Even if Engert is at 99 or something, he's a threat to get out. So I wouldn't be f too cavalier with my shot selection here. There you can see Gabriel's tables, the official table of the World Straight Pool Championships and also Simona's Claw. They're playing on the TV Blue, which is used mainly for uh, televised and filmed matches, so you can see the balls better. And Aramith Balls, the TV set of Aramith Balls are, are what we're using to play on. Notice the color's a little bit different on the balls. Fantastic equipment. The official rack of the event, Startle Tight Rack. Yeah, it's been a pleasure all week playing on this equipment. It was really nice. Well, it's definitely a pleasure having you at the event, Danny. You've been a great addition, and New York fans, they seem to really um, love to watch you play and, and get behind you. Well, sure, because they know at any moment I could miss any shot, so I lend a, <laughs> a level of excitement to the thing. You know, these good players, you know, they're always going to make their shots. What fun is that? But me, I'm capable of missing anything, so, you know, it's fun. Well, that's a good point. Yeah. And congratulations, I heard that you're a, a new father once again. Yes. Yes, it's, uh, I'm tired. I need sleep. <laughs> so now you have uh, two kids, right? Yes, I do. Well, you're a pretty young father, just being, what, you're like, what, mid-30s? That's right, I was born 1937. Uh, that would make me 112. <laughs> I said, well, I'll tell you what, Inger took no time to run that whole rack out. That no, was he didn't. It was, it was very clean. The balls were all lined up for him. It was pretty, uh, it was a road map. Our official online sponsor for the event was Cybers.com, and you can type in Cybers.com backslash world, and you can see all the information about the World Straight Pole Championships, all the press releases interviews and behind the scenes and also all the results of the round robin the final 32 and the final 16. It's amazing to see how much work went into putting this thing together you know I see you running around the tournament hall in addition to playing and you're doing pretty good actually for a guy that doesn't play straight pool you're doing pretty <laughs> darn good and doing all this work over here. It's, Thanks it's, Danny. It's really a lot I see a lot of attention to detail and uh, well, that's just because I can't afford to pay for more staffing to do the look stuff. <laughs> yeah. Good thing you're young. You can see in the background there are some great players. There's um, Holden Chin, actually. He's another New York player. He owns a pool room. Good guy. He's playing against Ralph Sukay from Germany, one of the top favorites to win the event, actually. So Holden's going to get a lot of good experience there playing against a uh, world champion. Holden is a gentleman. He's a, he's a sporting gentleman. He, uh, he plays because he loves the game. 
and he's a nice person to be around. Steve Lipsky back there playing on uh, one of the tables, another great New York player. He's just terrific. He can really, really talented, talented young man. So what do you think about this rack, Ran, uh, Danny? Do you see anything? Nothing. Nothing, nothing. tough for him. It's going to be another clean rack? Well, it looks pretty straightforward. Once he, The only problem he has is uh, clearing up the balls at the bottom so later he can get a shot at the eight. You'll see how he works around. If he does this nice and neat, he won't have to go into the balls at all. And later he can shoot the three or the five at the pocket where the seven is, so clean that out of the way. Now he might be bumping into it now. He might be driving into the eight now because he has the seven right there, but he'll try to move it as little as possible. Oops. Whoops. See, that's the problem with going into balls. You just put the six in a spot where it's a problem. Not insurmountable, but it's something that needs to be dealt with. And that's something that can you explain to me in straight pull, in your philosophy, is it's better to try to avoid um, going to balls as least amount as you can? Oh, yeah, definitely. It's... Uh it's one of the first things you're told when you when you start playing. One of the things that sticks in my mind as I search my memory banks for little pieces of advice I was told. You don't go into balls. You don't bank balls. Just rules of thumb. They were pretty useful. And if you refer back to them, they help you get along in the game. Now, when you've been watching a little bit of the European players and American players, a lot of people are debating him discussions about the differences of styles. Do you think that the European players go into the balls more often than Americans do, or vice versa? Oh, they tend to annihilate the rack on the break shot, so they don't worry about having a, a, an easy shot after the break. They usually have a choice of several shots. They're all immensely talented. They pocket very well. Uh, learning how to maneuver around the rack, they'll, they'll pick that up in no time. They're very smart players. They, they, all have, they all have a desire to learn. This man ran 495 balls anyway. I don't think there's anything I can tell him about the game. I heard um, another straight pull kind of knowledgeable fan mention that he watched the European players play and American players and that the Europeans, like you said, they kind of tend to go into the rack a lot harder and more forcefully mm -hmm. spreading the balls open and he says and he he was kind of old school so he said that basically that's not how like straight pulls supposed to be played the only european i've seen playing straight pull like how supposed to be played is thomas inger he yeah. picks the balls out and he doesn't slam into them i'm hey, he is that is from france there's another good player stephen cohen i have never seen before and this place terrific, solid, solid game. Your point about uh, Engert's difference in style from the other German players or the other young European players, it, it might be true, but I don't know if one is better or worse in terms of style. Whatever gets you out, whatever gets balls made is correct. The differences in style means very little, as long as you're making balls. I'll tell you what, that was a great shot that Engert just hit right there. He shot, he's a lefty, and it was on his side, but he had to kind of reach out an awkward angle with his body, and backwards cut that four ball and come around for position for that a was break a, shot. Yeah, that was beautiful. I mean, he stopped the uh, cue ball in an ideal target zone. He tra The cue ball traveled about 18 feet or so. Uh, that was really a top quality shot. It's also probably the, uh, a sign that he misplayed the rack, having to go 18 <laughs> feet on his cue ball. But he recovered, he made the ball, and that's all that counts. Let's see, here's a good example again. We're going to see Anger at the break shot again. And Danny, how, how hard would you hit this? Well, uh, if, you, if you're in a position where you can just draw back to the center of the table, you won't have to hit this one too hard. He's got to worry that he doesn't follow off a ball, catch the bottom of a ball on the object, uh, in the rack, and actually follow it in. So he's got to hit it a little stiff. But I think he's just going to try and draw back to the middle of the table. Just like that? Just like, just, we have to say it with a New York accent, a New York Italian accent. Just a like a dat. <laughs> Are you New York Italian? No, but I've, <laughs> but I've eaten a lot of pizza in my life. <laughs> that makes, as is real, real, clearly evident by the <laughs> lack of space here. 
What is Burundi? What nationality is Actually, that? Actually, uh, Syrian. Syrian? Yes. Oh, wow, I didn't know that. I remember... Uh, uh, Syrian is basically Middle Eastern, right? Yeah, well, it's, it's decidedly Middle Eastern, yeah. <laughs> I remember Mike Zuglin, who's another great straight pool player. He's also of Syrian extraction. Okay, is he? I think Syrian... Um, or Le- No, you know what he, he told me once? He said... Lebanese. He's Lebanese. Which is the same thing. Oh, it is. Yeah, okay. Basically. So he was um, playing an event in Florida that I was producing. And, you know, he's a great player, great straight pool player, good promoter. And I asked him one time... And Mike's, like, really got a strong New York accent, and he's, you know, Northeastern and yeah. very Americanized, right? And I asked him one time, what is Zuglin anyways? He goes, don't tell anybody, <laughs> but it's Lebanese. <laughs> so. Well, I think he's from here, as I am. I'm first generation. I'm, uh, the closest I've ever been to the Middle East is Jones Beach. That's as far east as I've ever gotten. You probably won't convince too many people of your nationality if you went over there to visit by your accent. <laughs> no, you're right. And most people think I'm Italian because the name Baruti sounds Italian. It does sound Italian. It doesn't mean anything. But uh... So anyway, it's back to this rack here. Ingrid's studying it now. He's slowing down. It's like, is he a little bit in trouble here? Uh, if he doesn't have a shot, he's in trouble. I think he has a shot. Might be playing a kiss-off here from the, thir- from the 12 to the 1. No, he probably has. Yes, oh, he right. did. Nice yeah. call. Well, he's in trouble again. This is this is something I notice about anger. He gets stuck. He gets stuck, and he gets out of it. He's he's very, but he's unflappable. Tremendous shot maker. Yeah. This Stefan Cohen right now. Let's see if Ingrid, Ingrid can keep up his run here, especially after that that bank shot, that four ball was really key. That's another good shot. Not only do you have to make a good shot shooting around a ball, but you have to come back for position. He's got his wits about him. Well, this match looks like it's going by pretty fast for Ingrid. He's already yeah. got 40 points, almost at the halfway mark. It, yeah. Tony's missed to the side pocket. This is probably going to be what cost him the, the game here. And this tournament was so interesting because at any moment, besides the fact I could see so many people from New York that I know, I'm looking at players from all over the world, really great players too, at almost any time during the tournament because of the round robin format. Everybody had to stick around. It's usually people get beat, they go. Yeah, that was one cool thing for us producing the event that it was everybody was looking at the charts, standing around and seeing mm-hmm. what the not only where the record was, but they had to pay attention to what the other guy's record was in the group. Sometimes your advancing into a next round might depend on how well uh, one player in your group does against another player. Yeah, it certainly did. And it, it, just as an aside it makes the tournament so much more friendly because you're seeing people from other cultures and and it's just nice you know it's just a fun environment uh oh this is this is the end he has <laughs> nothing here zero if he can make something out of here I'll pick him to win the tournament from this point he's got he's got <laughs> nothing here He'll be lucky if he can get uh, beat him to the safety. What would you do here, Danny? Well, you see where he's pointing? Yeah. That's where he wants to leave the cue ball. No matter what object ball is loose, he's going to have to leave something. And we see Fabio Petroni back there. That's a pretty good safe. He left a little green over there for Tony. This is a tough shot here. Astro Tony missed that side pocket shot earlier. This is not any easier. Uh huh. We have uh, Jose Garcia from Philadelphia, great player. He's run over 300 six times. Yeah, he is a tremendous player and a super nice guy. Yeah, gentleman. And I see Stefan Cohen from France, as I mentioned, and Tony from New York, and Schmidt, and all these players. 
from Henley Imports, we see Jim Mattia. <laughs> Yeah, Jimmy Matai, this is his first big event he's played in probably in like over a decade. He he contacted us and said, you know, I don't like playing nine ball or anything else, but I love straight pool and I'm I'm willing to dust my cue off and come out playing your straight pool tournament if you'll give us an invitation. He's he's been uh colorful to say the least. <laughs> the least. <laughs> so Tony is He's looking for uh, something other than this long shot, which besides being difficult, probably leads to nothing if he makes it, it being straight. And he's looking to see if something kisses off of something else. I always look to see if something kisses off of something else. I almost think he's going to have to like jack up and just kind of spear it in and stop his rock a little yeah. bit. This is a tough shot to come up with. Oh, was he going for it? At yes, all? he was, but he had to move the cue ball. He had to punch it. Wow. And that's the risk. That's that's why I said oh, I would be loath to shoot a shot like that. This is an easy out here. This, is, this should be really easy. So basically, uh, Thomas's safety has paid off. Mm hmm. Looks like the eight is going to be the break shot. I'm going to try and come back for the two or the four and leave the uh, leave the five uh, five ball for the key ball for the eight. Play the two, go back and forth across the table. Get a shot at the four and then play the five for the key ball. Child's play. Child's play. Yeah. He, Mirror he, child's play. I'll tell you, he, this guy <laughs> executes just nice. <laughs> it's nice being here and just saying what they're going to do and they just do it. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I, I talk very loudly. You could obviously hear it. <laughs> it would never occur to him to make a plan like that. It's the nice soft shot. Just like connect the dots with this guy. He's very strong. So he's playing a behind the rack breakout shot. So is he going to go inside English, go three rails after he makes a shot, or? Uh, it's hard to tell. He might be close enough to the edge of the rack where he could put uh, high right on it and just hit the long rail and spin to the middle of the table, or he may go three rails. It's 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 a feel thing when you get down there and you look at the angle of the uh, break shot and how where, how close the object ball is to the rack and where it is in relation to the end of the rack. Now, for example, if you're going to go like the high right and just go to the go side rail back to the middle, what's, yeah. when is it the wrong time to play that shot when you misjudge it? When, when you're buried in the middle of the rack, you don't have enough, uh, you won't have enough steam to get you out of there. There could be interference from the other balls too. And what happens when you try to go to inside English and go three rails? If you misjudge it, what, what's the bad thing that can happen? Well, you you juice in the ball, you juice in the ball, and you can uh, you can miss more often. You have to hit it a little harder. I see. So right now, score is 54 Ingert to two to Tony Robles. Yeah. See if he he puts the high left on here, that ball will run right around the, back to the middle of the table. And that's probably what he's going to do. You know, look at the score here. Obviously, right now it's pretty one-sided at 54 to 2, but I just can't help but think back to that Tony Robles after the first two shots of him breaking the balls out and missing the ball. I mean, I can't help if he didn't miss that ball in the side pocket that the score could be a reverse of what it is right now. It certainly could have been. It certainly could have been. That was, that was, uh, that was a tough miss. He hit that pretty nice. Didn't come back quite to the middle of the table, but still, he's in control. It takes a lot of confidence in your own abilities as, as a shot maker. You, know, you think of him as a position player, but you have, you have to shoot good because you keep coming up with shots. And clear off those two balls and then come back and worry about opening them up finally. Well, one good thing about this format is if either player, whoever wins or loses, the loser of the match 
still have a chance to to make it through the round robin because that's the whole point of round robin is that you can have one or two bad matches and still be in the ball game and make your way through which versus in a, a double elimination tournament or even single elimination you got you play a bad match or two bad matches you're pretty much done it's over for you in the whole tournament that's true yeah, that was strange that he left that six there. He probably felt he couldn't come up back up the table comfortably. He fires a combination in. Just back like, to the center. Yeah. And there was a lot of space between those balls. It wasn't like it was a give me. Yeah, I think he definitely makes I've noticed him shooting combinations in throughout the event and he, he haven't seen him miss one yet. Mm hmm Now is that something in straight pool, like great straight pool players have in common, is that they're great at playing combinations? I think you see him more often and is uh, certainly more often than a nine ball and multiple ball combinations and shots that are hidden in the stack that kind of stuff comes up a lot it's useful to know those things Tony's very good at that stuff too What do you think are, are the pros and cons of like being a great nine ball player and being a great straight pool player, you know, and vice versa? Well, I, I'm not a big fan of nine ball, personally. I don't find it a very interesting game. I think it's a function of gambling almost. If you're not gambling at nine ball, it's, it's, to me it's a deadly dull game. Whereas straight pool, there's so much independent thought that goes into it. You have to make your own plans and uh, I just find it more interesting. That's me, personally. Uh, maybe somebody could say the opposite. They say they, could, they find interest in nine ball f for whatever reason. I've never been a fan of nine ball. I just, maybe I'm greedy. I like to stay at the table a long time. So if you run 100 balls, you're there for a while. Probably comes from being a selfish person. That's probably it. <laughs> Wanger well, came with a nice, great, long shot in that six ball. Yes, he did. He just getting... to mention about these, these tables, their pockets are four and a half inches, which basically is professional standard, and they're certainly not super loose. You couldn't ask for better tables. Yeah, you notice he's coming up with a lot of shots here. And he still has a manufactured a break shot. He gets, he, he's had a succession of tough shots, and he's gotten out of line a few times. He's gonna, maybe he's going to try and break these up right now. now. He may not come out with a shot, though. That's the only problem this late in the game. Oh, he's going to bypass it. No, he's back to breaking them up. No, <laughs> He'll figure it out here in a second. Yeah, there he goes. But, he, you know. like, you, like you said, he didn't leave himself. Well, I guess he did he, leave himself a shot here at the five. But yeah, I think he's going to put a lot of reverse on this and try and. Uh, well, no, it looks like he's going to try and bump that strike ball up near the side pocket. Nice call. Now he can take his pick. He can play a break shot to the side or a one rail break shot. What do you like with the one? I think I like the shorter shot, the one rail, rather than the side. You're very close to the object ball. You're not going to miss it. You're going to get a pretty solid hit out of it. Oh, yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if Tony... He doesn't have a great angle on this break shot. Now, when, you're going, when you have a shot like this on a break shot in straight pull, when you're hitting the object ball, going to the rail, and then going to the stack after you hit the rail, where he's at right now, is it better to go towards the middle of the rack or the bottom of the rack or upper part of the rack? I think you'd be safer if he, if he had more of an angle. He could turn it in and get a flatter hit against the rack where he wouldn't lose the cue ball. Over here at this angle, it looks like the shot is a little straight. He's going to have to hit it harder. Uh, I don't want to hit the top of the rack because you might lose the cue ball. So I'd say the bottom of the rack. Okay. So basically, if you're shooting the shot and you're telling yourself, if I, if I err, I should err towards the bottom of the rack versus the higher part of the rack. Well, I feel after, after playing pool so long, 
Anytime I turn the cue ball loose, I, I expect to scratch. Anytime. <laughs> I don't even complain anymore. <laughs> I just figure, okay. See that ball ran up the table. Yeah. Like that's the risk in that. He got a little lucky there. But he, he had a little bit on the upper part of the rack. And that's what I mean. This guy is, seems to be snake bit. Uh, if you can call such a successful player snake bit, almost every rack he has one ball to shoot at after the break, no matter how hard he hits them or where the balls line, how many open up. I mean, he's got about six balls opened up. He only had a shot at one of them. Well. Tony still at two points. Ingert at, I can't see the score completely, 60-something. Yeah, this, this game is over here. This game is effectively over. Now he's going to do something that's kind of tough to do. He's going to bring home a one game. He's not going to mess this one up. I don't know why he didn't play that four ball. I can, probably because of the angles that we can't tell from, uh, from where we're sitting. It looked like an, a nice shot to break with. 14 was right there if he got stuck. He probably didn't have the angle on it because he just improved to get right back there. He probably heard me again. <laughs> I got to talk softer. I, I was noticing, I think it looks like a, kind of an earpiece in his left ear. That's it. He doesn't have the angle again. Now, I don't like shooting this behind the, the rack without a ball there. Well, I guess he's going to count on the seven. I'm going to go into these softly. He's got the seven at, at the very least. A very strong player. I like the speed that Ingrid plays. I mean, he he seems like when it's when it's kind of automatic, mm -hmm. he just does it. Yeah. And then if he needs to stop and think a little bit, he'll do it, but not too long and mm -hmm. not too short. And he just seems like to have great rhythm and. I don't know. I mean, a nine ball. I know the importance of rhythm, but a straight pull is is it important to have rhythm. Or I think straight pull definitely is a rhythm game. I think nine ball has its own rhythm too. I think all the games do in their own way. You have to know when you have a tough shot. Nine ball when to come up with it. I mean, are there examples of players that you know that are great straight pull players but don't really have much of a rhythm? Or uh, wow. Or do all great straight pull players in common have great rhythm? I, I think their own sense of rhythm. I mean, some are going to be like Duke Ellington and some are going to be like Guy Lombardo. Some are just going to be a little squarer than others. Who has the best rhythm in straight pull that you've ever seen? Well, the most natural I ever saw was Jack Colavito, bar none. I mean, he was as lithe and graceful as you could tell. The Filipino players, as lithe as they are, they're uh, very slow. Very slow. Uh, I like to bring a magazine when I'm playing them because they're that, they're that slow. Uh, Larry Lascotti was very fast. He had a nice tempo. Uh, Mizrak was slow, but he was overwhelming when he played. Probably the, the most graceful I ever saw was Jack Olavita. He used to go to the Golden Queue a few days a week and just annihilate people over there. And the games were always quick, very quick. Just like he was running around the table. Is he gonna pay a break shot for the side pocket? Yes, he is. This is a pretty good break shot when it when it works. Now this is not exactly what you would call like textbook break shot, like what you would want, but what are the pros and cons of this break shot? Well, you're gonna go into the side of the rack the side pocket at this angle is a pretty big target, so you, you, you're pretty safe in shooting the ball. You could get stuck in the side of the rack. That's the biggest thing. But no scratches. Well, you got to get a little unlucky to, to glance off the rack there. He's going to jump the ball to, to make it go into the rack solid. Shouldn't get too much movement on the cue ball, but the rack should explode. When you say jump the ball, you mean he's going to elevate his cue a little bit when he shoots this? Yeah, you make the ball bounce a little, change its course a little, so it so it goes in at, uh, at a different location. You don't want it going in at too much of an angle. What well, a score here, 82 to two. Thomas is only gonna need this rack plus about three balls. Yeah. So. 
Well, he better not miss because because uh, Tony can run out on him. As a matter of fact, this this might be cutting a little low. He might wind up going to the to the bottom of the rack here. Whereas if he was hitting the eight, he would just stick it right in there. It's hard to tell at this angle that I'm looking at it right now, but. Uh, Ooh. That seemed like a very nice shot. That was a nice shot. And he has nothing. If you'll notice, once again, he has a tough shot. No, he's got the nine ball in the side pocket, I think. Well, take a look. I mean, he's got to turn the cue ball loose a little. He still has to come up with a shot here. He's got eight balls loose out of the rack. He should have a little more than this. You seem to be pretty, pretty confident. <laughs> So is he back in good shape again? He's fine. He's out. This game's history. Okay, Charlie, I'll see you later. Goodbye. <laughs> nice talking to you. It's great. Thanks for joining us at the round robin <laughs> match of the World Straight Pool Championships where they oh, are still playing. Just, oh, that's a mere formality. Tony doesn't know the match is over yet. Well. So we, maybe we should give him, you know, but you never know, right? I mean. Tony's ordering lunch right now. Are you kidding? He knows this game's over. Who knows? If 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 Fenger get gets uh, if he misses from here, I'd be very surprised. He's so solid, it's like textbook watching this. So really, Tony's only mistake in the match was missing that ball in the side pocket. Yeah, I mean the eight ball he missed later on was a very difficult shot. Anyone could miss it. He had no choice but to shoot it. The one he missed in the side was just terrible. That was that, that's you just can't miss against a guy that's strong. Now. In a race to 100 points on this caliber of world-class straight pool players, I mean, how, how big is one miss in the match? Well, you see what he's done to Tony Robles, is one of the best players, uh, best living players right now. He, he just uh, dominated him in two I mean, innings. Do you feel like that, you know, like, okay, if you miss a shot early on like Tony did, that, that you're going to get another big opportunity to do something? I'm sure when Tony missed that shot, he figured he might not shoot again. Really? Oh, sure. Oh, oh sure, definitely. As a matter of fact, the finger didn't get stuck after he broke those balls before his safety. Uh, he probably wouldn't have missed. He was shooting that clear. His play was that clean. It looks like he's going to leave the three or the... Uh, let's see. What ball is that? The 15 there or the 11? So, what do you like for the key ball? Uh, depends on what the break shot is. I guess he's going to leave the seven, the three for the break, and he'll probably leave the two for the key ball. He's got a lot of ways he can go here. Pick up the six. Uh, two will be the key ball for the three, it looks like. Come back. And he came back a little further than he wanted to, but he should be able to hold this shot. he play the 11, the 5, and then the 2. Nice and easy. Well, I have to say that, you know, watching Anger play this round robin match, I'm getting more and more impressed by the skills of this fine German player. Thorsten Holman, who's got to be one of the top five best players in the world right now, in many people's opinion, you know, told me that Inger is definitely one of his idols growing up. And I wasn't really familiar with this game, but after watching this, I, I kind of understand now why yeah. he respects this game so much. Yeah, he's a, he's a solid player. Yeah, I don't see any weaknesses in his game. He's he needs to get a mirror when he combs his hair, though. That's, <laughs> I don't know what that is, but, and I'm nearly bald and I'm critiquing that, so I don't know. So if you had hair, you, you would do something different with it? I would, I think he goes to the same back barber that Max Eberly goes to, and uh, they both must have pissed off the barber somehow. Well, look at that, Anger, four balls away from another win in a round robin.
putting himself one step closer to making the cut to the top half of the tournament. Tony Robles, he loses his match, he's going to be struggling. He's going to have to really change something in his game plan to make it to the next round. Nice and he right across the top. And the usual, he has one shot. He pretty much knew he was going to have something, though. He played a 6, 2, and 9. That's it. Now, when you only need four balls like he needs, and he's got that break shot, I mean, are you kind of thinking that don't overhit it, just clip balls out? Because... Oh, he knows what to do here. I would probably play the two and go into it softly. Oh, he had the eight. Okay. Well, I wouldn't have done that. You come up short or you go too far, you don't have a well, shot. This is it, the winning that shot. That was it, yeah. No time at all. And that's Thomas yeah. Ingard over Tony Robles, 100 to 2. Almost a blowout there. This was a clinic. This this uh, game was an actual lesson in how to play a game of pool. This was a very good, instructive game. Well, Danny, thanks for joining us again to World Trade Pool Championships. This was my pleasure, and thank you for the, the, the tournament and the whole event. This was very nice.